Welcome to another James Kelly tutorial where we take a clip as boring and as static as this and we turn it into something like this. Follow along now as I show you how. Now. How. Now. I imagine many of you are doing what I'm doing, trying to make films for YouTube and you have limited gear. If you haven't got the equipment such as sliders and uh, gimbals, how do you get creative shots when your camera is locked off on a tripod like this? I am in that situation. I do a lot of my shots locked off on a tripod, so I'm just the only person shooting. I wouldn't really trust my wife to get the good shots, but I'm still looking to get a creative eye and angle for every shot I'm doing. So I'm going to show you my three favorite tricks inside Premiere Pro. This may work for Final Cut as well, but I've never used the software, so I have no experience in that. But I imagine it would work. So let's dive on in right now. This is a locked off shot. As you can see, there's no camera movement. It's just static. Now we could do the obvious thing, like add some keyframes, zooming in, just punching in slowly and that is definitely a good way of adding a little bit of interest it keeps the you know the attention span of the viewer for a lot longer than if it was just static so it's definitely a way of keeping people interested in your videos but it's limited and all you can do is some kind of zoom but the sort of shot that we want to create is a slider shot but how are we going to do that when the camera is static and locked off on a tripod let me show you Here's a clip that I've got recorded, locked off on tripod. I position myself directly in the center of a door frame. And what we're gonna do is mask out part of that image using the door frame as our guide. If you don't know how to mask, definitely something to research into if you wanna get better in Premiere. Now what we're gonna do is duplicate the clip, delete the mask that we created. And as you can see at different scales, we can now use the original mask to frame a background layer. And if we keyframe different zoom values for the background layer and the foreground layer, we can trick the computer, well, trick the viewer into thinking it's a slider shot because you get to reveal more of the photo frames behind. Uh, you've got to be careful not to show door frame from the original clip. And as you can see on the left, we've got the original locked off shot. On the right, we've got the fake slider shot. And hopefully you'll agree it's an improvement over something static. It's quickly done for you, but it's a good way of showing what can be done. You can also do sideways movement with keyframes. So rather than zooming in slider, you could do left to right slider, and that gives the illusion of a 3D kind of parallax look. The next thing we can do to improve the shot is by adding a transform effect. And what this allows us to do is punch into the shot and it adds some natural motion blur. So you haven't got to add directional blur or Gaussian blur and keyframe that. It does it automatically. And by adjusting the angle at the bottom of the effect panel, it decides how much blur it adds. Uh, I use this a lot for my, my titles that fly across the screen and that sort of stuff. So we've got a new clip we're gonna use, but also it's using the existing framework that we've marked already. Again, positioning keyframes, different zoom amounts to create that fake slider look. And once we're happy with that, what we're gonna do is nest the two items. Now the reason we nest is because we need to apply an effect to both these layers that affect them in the same way. Next, we're gonna insert another clip from a different lens. Camera, same location, just I've changed the 35 mil to 100 mil. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to do a transition from one lens to the other, but almost seamlessly. So it looks like it was intentional and it was like a, a quick zoom in by the operator of the camera. Now we're going to actually apply the transform effect to the nested layer. So inside the effect controls panel, you'll see the transform and all the values inside here. Now what we need to do is tick off the shutter angle box and then we'll add our own value into the shutter angle. 180 is a good place to start. Place a keyframe click along for, add another keyframe, but increase the scale quite a lot. And the idea is we're trying to match the scale of the next clip. So if we do a bit of an opacity over the next clip and drag it over the original clip, we can then do some lining up of the eyes 
just to try and blend it in together well. Apply it back to 100% and let's play it back. It looks pretty good. But basically, we're trying to match the position of the eyes and the kind of the impact of that kind of eyebrow movement and the hair throwback as to when the camera stops. Another little tip is on the next clip to continue the, the forward mo movement. So I like to add a transform effect to that layer as well and add a few keyframes at the beginning of the blur continuing. And that just helps sell in the whole illusion that we've just zoomed in. And what we can do now is actually also apply it at the end of the shot. We want to go from the 100 mil back to the 35. So it's the same, same situation. We just need to apply some keyframes, put the shutter angle in and zoom back out to the original 35 mil focal range. Again, you might need to do some lining up to get it just right. And here's the final result. You can see the camera hits my face smack bang and it makes my head jolt, which is kind of the result I was after. And it's a nice transition back out. It's definitely gone from being a locked off boring shot to something a lot more creative. Now the final thing we can do is something requested from my last video, Gaming Gods. People were asking, am I using an anamorphic lens for the light on the controller? Nope, I'm not. I just like adding these little lens effects uh, inside Premiere. Now there's definitely plugins you can buy that probably do an anamorphic effect, but I'm gonna show you a quick and easy, quite a rough and ready way of doing it, but the results still are quite good. Now, as you can see here, I've got the controller in my hand, but other than the natural glow that the PlayStation has, it hasn't got any of that anamorphic kind of lens flare going on. Let's show you how I do that quickly inside Premiere. So what we want to do is add a colored ellipse and we'll put this on like a screen mode or uh, overlay. Uh, then what we want to do is add a Gaussian blur to the, um, to the ellipse, just so it blends in the scene. And as you can see, it kind of adds a nice glow to the controller. And the next thing we want to do is a new ellipse, but we want to really, really squash it almost to the point where it's a line stretches why does you want it to be put it on screen mode again and then we'll apply a little bit of blur until we end up with the result that we are after uh, sometimes stacking the same layer on top of the other one adding a bit more blur changing the lighting style also adds a bit more of a punch for the final outcome and then when you got your your thin lines the kind of the anamorphic look uh, we could nest this whole group together and then apply that to a screen layer so it interacts better with the background. And then what we're gonna have to do is use that whole group, that nested item, and keyframe it to follow along the controller movement. Now I don't want you to have to watch me do the keyframing, so let me just skip this part or speed it up so you can just see the final outcome of how it looks. So it's looking pretty good, but we can still improve on it by adding a color grade. And overall, I'm happy with that, but there's still one more thing we can do. Uh, I didn't try this in the last film, but let's try it now. This might help sell the full illusion. When it hits my face, the, the kind of the zoom in, I want there to be an extra bit of oomph and uh, glow and I was thinking we could do this by adding a lens flare just type in lens flare in your effect panel and up it comes again not sure if you need to know this part but a lens flare will only affect an item that is actually solid below so you might have to add like a color matte layer below it if you haven't got any actual footage so within my nested sequence of all the lighting effects it doesn't show unless I have a black layer below. Yeah, having the glow on the face, it definitely makes it look a bit more realistic. Uh, and all the keyframing actions are 
locked in to that nested layer, so that means they're locked in to the, the lens flare. Now, anything you put on that nested group will have the movement applied to it. So yeah, overall, I think it worked. Now this effect hasn't just got to be used for a control, obviously. It would be great for a torch. It would be great also for kind of as you poke your head through a bit of sunlight. Either that or just buy an anamorphic lens and get it properly done. <laughs> but who's got thousands and thousands to spend on a lens for that effect? So that's it. Three little tricks inside Premiere that can make a difference to a single static shot. Nah, I hope you liked it. It was something that I thought would be good to show because even Matty Hapoya, who chose my film as a third place winner for the, uh, the film festival challenge, his, his comment was that my opening shot captivated him and caught his eye and he knew that it was going to be something good. So I was quite flattered and I wanted to kind of show that to get something good, you haven't got to have all the gear. You just got to know how to use what you have got. So I hope you found those three tips useful. Uh, if so, why not give this video a like? And I'd love to know in the comments section, what are your best tips inside Premiere? I mean, maybe there's some crossover for Final Cut as well. So equally, let me know what your favorite effects to do that aren't just standard built-in effects, but like kind of little hacks inside the program that you like to exploit. If you like the video, why not consider subscribing? I do these little tips behind the scenes sort of thing frequently, and it'd be great to have you along for my journey. So hit that like button, comment, bell, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.